As the uh, gastronomic writer in residence for the Stratford Chef School in Canada, I had the opportunity to give a lecture at the Stratford Public Library about um, social media and the way it has changed the way we cook, eat and write. First order of business, I, I want to thank you all for coming out here tonight. It's, uh, it's a real honor to be involved with the Stratford Chef School this year and um, a real honor also to get a chance to spend two weeks in Stratford and life here is proving very pleasant so far. So um, I want to thank you for coming out tonight. Um, as, um, as you can see on this um, title slide, our discussion tonight is going to be about blogs and social media and the influence that those tools have had on communication around food and more specifically the way we cook, eat and, and write. Um, so before I begin, I just want to um, tell you a few words about, um, about myself in addition to what Eleanor um, has been kind enough to, um, to say and about my blog, since uh, this is kind of what, what makes me um, the uh, social media expert that, um, that, as I'm described in the brochure. Um, so I was, I was brought up in Paris. I was born and raised uh, in Paris. I studied to be a software engineer. And when I graduated, um, I left Paris to move to California in the Silicon Valley. Um, so this, these were the good old days of the startup companies. It was a very exciting time to be there. And um, my boyfriend and I, who was, uh, he was also in, in IT and still is, um, we, we wanted a piece of the action. And um, so we did go and, and um, and get it. Um, um, what I did not expect to find in California, um, beyond the you know the um, super highways and the very large uh, um, portions at restaurants, is uh, I, I did not expect to find a passion for food there. Um, I grew up in a family where um, food was important in the sense that my my mother is a very good cook and she cooked meals uh, you know night in and night out for for the family. She cooks with fresh ingredients, um, so she just has this very um, I guess very French you could say way of of of, um, of cooking. And um, but because I grew up with that, I was not unappreciative, but I just did not. Um, really stopped to think about it. To me, that's the way all families lived. And um, it's only when I moved to California and all of a sudden I had to fend for myself and cook for myself and shop for myself and make those decisions uh, that I realized how much... Um, uh, how much you get a sense of self from what you eat, what you choose to eat, what you choose to uh, to buy in terms of ingredients, and where you choose to eat out. Um, I had also been uh, been a you know a high school student and then a university student um, for you know the first chapter of my life, and so all of a sudden being a grown up with a salary and um, and a portion of my income that was disposable at restaurants meant that I could just you know go out and experience all kinds of um, all kinds of cuisine that were especially well represented in the Silicon Valley where engineers from all over the world gather and, um, and come with their own appetites and, and taste for food. Um, so all of a sudden I was faced with this um, incredibly rich um, universe that was the, the world of food and um, I really, I, I, I really immersed myself in it, and I cooked a lot. I bought a ton of cooking magazines, and I would just go and buy ingredients that I did not know what what to do with, and just bring them home and look them up and and play with them. And um, we ate really well. And um, so this was just something that I did for fun to kind of relax at the end at the end of the day. And also, I felt that. Um, uh, I was just interested in exploring um, the array of tastes that are available to the eater uh, in the sense that I was actually a, a quite picky, um, not really picky, but not very adventurous eater as a, as a child and a teenager. And, um, and I was just busy trying those tastes again, everything that I thought I did not like, and um, actually finding that aside from spinach, um, there was really nothing that I did not like. Um, so <laughs> that, was, that was something. Um, it was also a way of becoming a grown-up um, that, that, uh, that was a big part of my, of, my, um, of, of my life at that time. So I went back to France after two years in California, and I kept cooking. And at one point, I felt that... Um, the 
energy and the passion that I was uh, putting into my food and, and my kitchen um, needed some sort of outlet, um, some, some way to be transformed into something else. I felt that I was telling my friends and family a lot about what I was doing and what I was eating. And before I drove them completely crazy, um, I, I wanted to find a way to um, hold on to those things and, and document them and share them with people who were as passionate as I was about them. Because even though in France, uh, you know, people have, most people have a basic appreciation uh, for food and not everyone, but at least people around me did, um, no one was as, uh, um, you know, crazy about it as I was. Although I have to say I have been an influence on them and I feel that over the past few years I have kind of drawn them <laughs> towards, uh, towards that. Um, so a blog felt like the perfect way to do that. This was um, 2002, 2003. Uh, there were about a dozen blogs at the time and it, the cooking journal format just seemed like the perfect way for me to uh, document my cooking on a, on a regular basis. And the little community of food bloggers and, and their readers that existed at the time was a very friendly, uh, a friendly group of people, of like-minded people that I, I really yearned to join. So I did, I created a blog for myself in 2003, called it Chocolate and Zucchini to illustrate um, uh, the two sides of my culinary personality, uh, the zucchini for the fresh produce, the healthful food that makes you feel good and energized, and the chocolate for um, indulgences, baking, and um, just the king of uh, ingredients. Um, so I called it chocolate and zucchini and just started you know, writing this blog. Um, and soon enough, I, I found that I had caught the bug, um, the food writing bug. Um, I had always been a writer in, in some sense. I had always enjoyed writing, but had never found a, a subject that um, kept me interested long enough to actually finish a story. I started very many of them, um, but never could quite, you know, um, uh, accomplish any large-scale writing project. All of a sudden, food presented itself as this very warm subject that, um, that I could write about on and on uh, without ever um, running out of inspiration or, or ideas. Um, and at the same time, I realized that this was something that I enjoyed um, a lot more than, um, than writing um, uh, programs and, and selling software, even though I did, I mean, it was a job that I enjoyed and I worked with great people and it was, it was fantastic, but um, at the end of the day, I felt that what I was doing was not a very meaningful thing, that it did not touch people on a very personal level, um, and I felt that writing about food did that um, uh, plenty. Um, so I started to find ways in which I could transition to this new career, and uh, and gradually I did. I pitched uh, magazine articles, worked on a book proposal, and in 2005 I felt ready to um, quit the day job and um, and see um, how I would do on my own. So um, this was six years ago, a little over six years six years ago now, and. Uh, um, so far, so good. And um, so since then, I've been busy um, writing books, helping to edit other books, um, maintaining the website, um, writing, fr writing um, freelance uh, for magazines uh, in France and, and um, in North America and in the UK, uh, and also just um, uh, catching every opportunity that was thrown my way in terms of um, consulting, recipe development, um, um, uh, tours, you know, for people who just wanted to experience uh, uh, Paris through the lens of food, just a variety of things that make me very happy because I'm someone who's, um, uh, who likes variety in life and, and I feel that doing all kinds of things is, uh, is, is really an enrichment.